In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to increase the efficiency of your Amazon business by using a tool called Sellerboard. I've been using Sellerboard in my personal Amazon business for quite a while now, especially to help me with some restocking, tracking profits, and really just a lot of other things that I'll go ahead and show off in this video. But if you're brand new to the channel, my name's Warner Fields from Fields of Profit. I'm a full-time seven-figure Amazon seller. And one of the things that helped me reach that seven-figure Amazon seller status is building good systems, being on top of the items that I have already found. And we're really going to focus on that process in today's video. So we're going to jump into the computer here. And in just a second, I'll show you exactly how to use a lot of my favorite features. Before we do that, I want to say a massive thank you to Sellerboard for actually helping make this video possible and sponsoring this video. I really appreciate that support, especially from a tool that I've already used a ton in my own Amazon business. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump in and see how Sellerboard can help your Amazon business. Once you go ahead and hop into your seller board account here, if you've never seen it before, it's probably going to look a little bit something like this. It's gonna show you how many units you sold today, yesterday, month to date, all that good stuff and help you make sure you're actually tracking your profits on the fly. You can see all of your recent sales and all that good stuff. And this is just kind of the default view within seller board. This is very configurable and all that good stuff as well. If you want to, you know, check out a lot more information about your products, but this is really good just to check this every day. You know, hey, what's selling really well today? What items do I need to restock maybe? What items am I really profitable on? Which items am I selling at a loss right now, all those things are really important to kind of be aware of, right? So there's lots of other things you can use within here. If you're a wholesale guy, maybe do a little bit of private label. It can help you manage your PPC, all that good stuff. You can see here on the demo account, it can track your ACOS across a bunch of different ASINs and all that good stuff. Probably my favorite feature of seller board, especially I know a lot of you guys are online arbitrage, maybe some wholesale sellers, is the inventory planning feature of seller board. You can actually go in here, very configurable as well. It will track based on your stock, based on the adjusted sales per day, basically figuring out how many days of stock do you have left Left, how long until you need to reorder. And the thing that I really like about this is it's all configurable. And so this could vary by ASIN, right? So let's say if you're selling this product and you buy this product from overseas, it's going to take a lot longer for that product to actually come into stock versus a product that you maybe buy from Walmart, right? And so that's something you can always bake in over here. This is something that I do with my business. So over here, you can go ahead and edit. I actually like to go ahead and how much stock do I want after I restock the item, right? So usually for me, this is 30 or 45 days, depending on the item. Another thing that's going to be really cool in here is the manufacturing time or shipping time. Right. So you can go ahead and on my personal Amazon business, usually it takes, you know, anywhere from five to 10 days from the time that you place the order when it shows up. Maybe it sits at your prep center a few days. Maybe it takes your average FBA shipment takes 10 days. That's what it defaults to here as well. You can bake all of those numbers in, really get a good idea of exactly how much inventory you need to be in stock for those 45 days, those 30 days of stock that you're really looking for. And so something that I do within my own Amazon business is just hop into seller board. My manager will also hop into our seller board account hunting for any of these products that have sold a lot recently. So you can filter by the adjusted sales velocity. So this way, selling about 19 units a day. Another thing that can be valuable is filtering this in terms of days of stock left. So if you filter it that way, you can see stuff that you, you've got plenty of inventory left on. Uh, if you filter it this way, you can see a bunch of inventory that maybe you're out of stock on and need to restock all that good stuff. Another thing that I'll try to do is go in here and filter this by days until next order. So hopefully you go in here and there's not a lot of profitable inventory that you are overdue on ordering. So according to seller board here, it looks like we're about to run out of stock. We probably should have ordered it a while back. And based on the math that we can custom configure over here, just like we just did, it's going to go ahead and suggest how much we should actually buy. I've actually found these numbers to be pretty reasonably accurate. I'll also go ahead and try to factor in some of the real sales. Something that I also like about this tool is that I can go in here and click the FBA FBM stock right here. And I can see, you know, what our stock was over different days. I can see how many sales we're making on those other days. And so on top of these numbers here, kind of algorithmically suggesting how much I should buy, I can also jump in here pretty quickly and get a rough idea of how many of this I'm going to sell every day. So I see, you know, we got one sale there, you know, it goes down. Now we sell three, two, kind of hovers somewhere around the two to three sales a day range, right? Some days it sells one, that kind of thing. So based on this information, I would maybe buy, you know, somewhere between 60 and 90. Seller board's suggesting that we should get 103, probably baking in the fact that I believe this is set to 90 days stock that we want to have here as the default. And so this page right here is probably the one that I use most frequently in my Amazon business. It really helps me get an idea of what's selling really well. And especially within OA, there's going to be a lot of products where you can go in and it's going to sell really, really fast. You order those 10 units, those 20 units, and they all sell through on day one, day two. Seller board does a really good job of kind of tracking those items that might otherwise slip through and you might forget about that lead. It'll show up on this tab. It'll, you know, the adjusted sales velocity be really high. It'll say, Hey, you, you know, there's zero days until you need to reorder this. It sold really fast. And so I really like to use this specific page within seller board really helps me get, stay on top of my restocking. Another thing that it really helps me with in my business is kind of automating the process of getting reviews. Now, if you're an arbitrage seller, wholesale seller, you probably 
don't really care about the product reviews. Maybe if you're doing a little bit of brand direct, but with private label, you especially care about that. But this is also just a great way to get actual storefront reviews. So you can see any of these campaigns in here. We can go in here and we can say, hey, any new customers I get, please go ahead and send them, you know, a templated email. In this case, we can go ahead and change this to the Amazon default, right? This is what's mine is set to. I don't want to get any trouble. You can write your own custom email that sends out to all customers, or you can just use Amazon's default. That's what I use. I don't want to violate TOS or anything like that, but it's really cool because the rate at which people review your storefront is going to be really, really, really low. Like one out of every couple hundred orders, maybe will go ahead and review your storefront. If you've bought on Amazon before, you've probably never reviewed anyone's storefront. And so this is going to help you kind of, you know, give your customers a little bit of a call to action to go out and give you a review on Amazon. You're going to be able to send this to new customers. You can send it to repeat customers, all that good stuff. On my personal campaigns, I usually exclude FBM orders. It's a little bit harder. You know, if they go in there and give you a one star, it can be harder to get FBM order reviews removed more so than FBA orders. A lot of times the issue that the customer is unhappy with can be blamed on FBA. You know, maybe it got broken in transit, that kind of stuff. And you can't do that as an FBM seller. So I usually just don't even ask FBM sellers for feedback. Don't want to give them any reason to go and give me a one star review, anything like that. Relatively customer that you can remove specific products. If you're kind of worried about specific products, whatever you want to do there, this can be a really good way. It's just going to automatically send an email to your customers, all compliant with TOS. They'll just go in here and then, you know, maybe boost up your review rate just by a little bit. They go in here to their email, give you a five star, that kind of thing can really help you because especially in the long run, the amount of feedback that you have does play a little bit of a role in the buy box rotation on Amazon, which basically decides how many sales you're going to get. So in a way, being on top of getting more and more reviews is going to help you slowly, slowly make more sales on Amazon. So the next time saver that I want to go ahead and show for you guys is a newer feature for seller board. I haven't had a ton of opportunity to play around with this feature in particular, but I'm excited to kind of implement it in my business. Um, so this is the purchase orders page within seller board. So anytime you actually go out, you purchase a bunch of inventory. See in this case, you know, we bought 1500 units of that and a thousand units of that guy. That can be kind of difficult to track if you don't have a good play, you know, you don't have a really good spreadsheet or anything like that, right? Seller board kind of does that for you, right? So if you go in here, you can actually just create new purchase orders. I would say this would work really well if you're a wholesale seller, maybe doing some OA, really decent volume on some different ASINs. Um, you can go in here and add information about each individual purchase order. And so the reason that I really like this is something that I've noticed as I scale my Amazon business is that if you're not on top of your leakage in your Amazon business, meaning inventory that might go missing, anything like that, those expenses are really going to add up and tracking your purchase orders like this is going to help you make sure you're not making, you know, significant amounts of inventory slip through, right? So when you go in here, you can go ahead and just add a product. Let's say we're replenishing this, you know, this book I probably sold, you know, two years ago or something like that within here, we can go ahead and just, you know, say how many units we ordered. So let's say we ordered a hundred units of that type in your, your units per box, boxes ordered, all that good stuff. And then recording that cost per unit over here is going to be really good as well, because let's say, you know, that inventory checks in, you buy it from your supplier and you notice that only 99 get checked in, right? If you're not doing a good job of kind of staying on top of these purchase orders, all that kind of stuff, those inventory dollars can really start to slip through. So on this page here, when you're placing a big order or even just placing an OA order, this can be really useful also to track your order numbers over time. So you can swap out this, you know, this sample PO number here, swap it out with your order number from the OA retailer or swap it out with your PO from your wholesaler, right? Go ahead and track that over time. So if you ever need, you know, you need to pull those documents for inauthenticity and stuff like that, that can be really valuable as well. So with this item, let's say you've gone ahead, you've paid, you know, say you paid a thousand dollars for this item, you know, all in that kind of stuff, especially if you're doing wholesale, there might be some transportation costs associated with that. So you can add that in here, you know, let's say you paid 20 bucks to ship this box, probably wouldn't be, you know, too much just in terms of, you know, one box of books, that kind of thing. So now you've got the full adjusted, you know, total cost per unit. And then once you do have all that kind of stuff thrown in here, you can go ahead and click save in the bottom right corner, click make changes on the planner page, save that. And then whenever this item actually goes ahead and checks in at Amazon, it's going to go from ordered to actually checked in. And then you're going to be able to track the discrepancy between what was ordered and what actually checked in at Amazon. And then also in the spirit of making sure that you minimize the amount of inventory that's leaking through your business, they're also rolling out this new FBA shipments page. You're going to be able to see all of your recent shipments at a glance here. You can see what percentage of the units actually arrived and if there's any you know discrepancies that kind of thing so for example this shipment right here looks like you know they only received eight percent of what we said we shipped 92 percent went missing and it went closed so at this point this would be kind of a good sign we go ahead and go after start tracking down potential refunds providing those purchase orders basically proving that you know maybe amazon lost some inventory that kind of thing but this new page has also been pretty useful to really just make sure that there's not a lot of leakage coming through the business because that can really crush things especially as you scale so then the last thing that i want to show to you guys i think it'll give you a better hand 
handle on your business. Down here on the bottom, there's just this alerts page. You can go ahead and check the log and you know, you can notice that, you know, hey, the FBA fees changed for this particular item. And this is all configurable within the settings here. So this is something that I do. You can get notified by email or if it's not quite as significant, you just can get notified on that alerts log there. So like if an ASIN loses their parent, that would be, you know, if you have a variation listing, you know, you say you got size 10 of a pair of shoes, get separated from that main listing, you'd get notified. You'd maybe even want an email in that case. So you can try to, you know, take steps towards reattaching those ASINs together, right? You could also get notified whenever you lose the buy box on an item. So especially if you're really deep on an ASIN that you want to be really on top of, you can get email, get notified within seller board when that happens. A lot of these are pretty useful, especially the dimensions changing. So if for whatever reason, the dimensions change on your item to something crazy and it increases your fees, all that kind of stuff. I'd want to be notified of that kind of as it comes up. Same story here. If the FBA fees get more expensive, if there's anything I can do about it, I want to know about it so I can change something, right? A couple other things that would be valuable is if your listing gets closed or if the text changes, title changes, all that kind of stuff, I'd want to know about that so that the item that I'm selling is still, you know, actively listed on Amazon and making sure that, you know, maybe another seller didn't change the listing to where if a customer orders my ASIN, they're going to be disappointed if they're expecting something else, right? Getting a negative merchant feedback email is also really nice so that I can really just get on top of that, get rid of those negative feedback as soon as possible. Because something I've noticed in my business is that on days where you get a negative feedback, you might get slightly less sales. I don't know if there's anything to that. Let me know in the comments if you guys have seen a similar pattern with your negative feedbacks. I haven't seen that anywhere else, kind of testing a theory, I guess. But there's a lot of things you could kind of configure alerts for, and it's all in the spirit of getting a better handle on your business. And so as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I want to say a big thank you to Sellerboard for actually sponsoring this video. I want to go ahead and show you guys the pricing now as well. If you do use the link down below, you'll get an extended two month free trial, which is crazy. You get two months to play around with this tool. And it really, it's not too bad at all, right? So the standard plan, a lot of you guys are going to apply for is 15 bucks a month annual, 19 bucks a month if you want to pay monthly, just kind of experiment with it, all that good stuff. And as you can see, there's a bunch of other options over here on the side. If you're an eBay seller, you do a little bit of Shopify. It's a bunch of extra features that I didn't have time to talk about in today's video. So I'd really encourage you guys, if you want to get a better handle on your business to go down below, click the link and get a two month free trial of Sellerboard. Start trying it out, see what it can do for you. So hopefully you guys now have a better idea of how to get a handle on your business in terms of restocking and a lot of the back end stuff that can really slip through as you're scaling your business. If you guys did get value out of today's video, please hit that subscribe button down below. It's a good way to add some value to my business for adding some value to yours. If you guys do have any questions, comments, anything like that, feel free to drop those down below. I'm always happy to answer those, but I really appreciate you guys watching and I will see you next time.